Thank you for being here this morning, and for those of you who are catching us online a little bit later, thank you also for spending some time looking at um, really what is our wonderful Holy Comforter Middle School. I'll be giving you kind of the 10,000-foot view today of our philosophy and, and how things work and why we do what we do. Um, first, I'd like to introduce Mr. Peter Kleekamp, who is our head of school, just to say a few words. Good morning. Um, I am so glad that we actually have parents on campus. I want to start off with our, our, our parents that are current uh, fifth grade Holy Comforter parents. Uh, Mr. Snowden and I have been blessed to be teaching uh, social studies and science, and I cannot tell you how awesome it has been for me to be stepping back into the classroom every day. Um, hopefully, your kids are feeling, well, I don't really care if they can. No, I do. Um, but the relationships that we've been able to create, be able to see the kids um, in that classroom setting has just been awesome. It is my favorite hour and a half of the day uh, because I'm not seeing emails. I'm not taking phone calls. I am just enjoying the classroom again. So that has been great, and I know that Mr. Snowden echoes those same sentiments as we've gotten to know these kids, and then we're also preparing for them for sixth grade. Um, for those of you that have a child here in the middle school and you're bringing them up, all of our guests, welcome. My favorite time in all of education, I've been in this for 29 years, is sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. Most of my time, I've taught fifth grade, fourth grade through 12th grade in some capacity, but my favorite is middle school. And the reason is, is they come in as sixth graders, big doe-eyed, and they don't know what to do. And they think, oh my gosh, how am I going to keep everything up, keep up with everything? And they're like, oh my gosh, all, my, all this independence, all this freedom. They don't really have any more freedom. But there are, they're developing those responsibilities. And they're figuring out, hey, I can do this on my own. And our teachers are phenomenal with holding their hands in sixth grade, showing them the way. In seventh grade, we nudge them out there. In eighth grade, we're demanding it. Because we want them to leave here and be able to advocate for themselves. Know when they don't understand, and I have... I have all different types of children in my own house, from an extrovert to an introvert, but they know what to do because uh, they'll say, well, Dad, this teacher at Leon High School, blah, 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 and go, what did you do? Well, I set up an appointment. Good, because you don't want to have to go down any high school hallway and say, I need to have a conversation with you. They don't want you to do that, okay? So when we start severing you away from them in middle school, it's not intentional to be hurtful. It's preparing them to be a high school student. And that's what you want. And our teachers love and embrace the middle school mind. And I do too, and maybe that's why my sense of humor is so warped. I love middle schoolers, as does Mrs. Vernon, Mr. Snowden, and everybody that teaches a middle schooler. And they're phenomenal at it. So you're gonna get to get firsthand experience if you haven't already. Uh, but I am so glad that you're here. We call it, when you cross the colonnade, it's not the dark side. Okay, when you leave lower school, there's nothing to be fearful of. And I talk to the students, I'm like, are you scared? And some are like, yeah. I go, you're going to be prepared. Don't worry. Especially with our fifth grade program currently, they interact with all sorts of teachers now, don't they? They're going to be ready. They'll be advanced. So thank you for being here. As always, if you have questions after you leave this presentation, be happy to answer them, sit down with you and answer any that we can provide. Have a great day. All right, and I am Amy Vernon, and I have been at Holy Comforter. This is my 24th year at Holy Comforter and my sixth year as the head of middle school. The, the 18 before that were spent, just like Mr. Camp in the classroom as a social studies teacher. Um, I taught some religion classes. I did a little bit of that in lower school, middle school, and I've done a couple other things. I am also the very proud parent of two alumni, both of my daughters, who are now at Childs High School, one is a senior, one is a sophomore, were at Holy Comforter from pre-K-3 all the way through eighth grade. Um, so I am, I, I am all about Holy Comforter. I am not the most objective person to talk to because I just, 
I love this school. I have grown up at this school. My children grew up at this school. We are not perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but it is a wonderful, wonderful place for children. And, you know, looking at the middle school years, particularly, they're a little hairy. Um, You know, they're full of all sorts of really interesting, challenging times. But like Mr. Kleekamp said, every one of our faculty, every one of the people who work with these middle schoolers do it because they love middle school. They love the messy. They love the unpredictable. They love these kids, and they want to see them grow as much as they possibly can in these three years that we have them. So a special welcome to those of you who are brand new to the school. And welcome to those of you, I know we have some alumni parents in here, as well as some parents of current middle school. So um, we've got a lot of great resources. Like I said, this is really going to be kind of a a bird's eye view of the philosophy. I'll get into classes a little bit. But if you have any specific questions after the presentation is over, please feel free to contact me. I'm happy to chat about specifics. But what I really want to do today is kind of get into what we do and why we do it and what is our philosophy for middle school. And it really starts with the philosophy of our school. And for those of you who are Holy Comforter parents, you've seen this, you've probably heard this, but this is our common language. You talk to, you know, an organization that is successful, they will tell you they have a common language. And this is really where our common language begins, and that is the mission of the whole school. So every teacher knows this mission. And, you know, there's really some key parts to this. We believe that each child is a unique creation of God, and then we nourish the spirit challenge the mind, strengthen the body, really to put them out to be contributing members of society. So so this is really the foundation of everything that we do as a school, and this is really where we start also as a middle school. So then that leads us into what our, our philosophical premise for the middle school specifically. And this is, you know, over time we've developed this and we really feel like these are the keys to what we are doing. And so we really believe it is a balanced approach, though we are a school, we are an academic institution, and we are primarily here to teach. There's so much more to these kids than just their intellects. And we really feel like this time, this three-year period, it's important to address all of that. And at this point, they're really still open to being invested in. As high schoolers, you know, they're particularly as, you know, sophomores, juniors, seniors, you know, those values are formed, those experiences have happened. In middle school, they're really, even though they don't want to admit it and they try to kind of make it seem like they're not, they're very much still able to be influenced and impacted by the adults in their life. And so we want to leverage that. We want to take advantage of that. So we address, of course, the intellectual, but you know, we have a wonderful opportunity in a Christian school to address the spiritual needs as well of these kids. And that is primary for our middle schoolers as well as they explore all of those pieces. And of course, the social and emotional is key to middle school. As fifth grade parents, you may have seen some of the social and emotional come out already, and it can take wonderful, sweet, kind, loving forms, and then it can take, oh my goodness, who is this child standing in front of me forms? And it really, I mean, it's so fun. Like, that's what's fun to me, is this just crazy, they come in one morning and they're a completely different child than they are three hours later. Or, you know, the next day they're a totally different kid and one day they're completely independent and I can do all this myself and the other day they're, you know, kind of a mess on the floor, like life is overwhelming and I can't do anything. And so that's what we jump into and we're able to really address a lot of those pieces through our programs at the school. So we really do take the whole child into account. It is incredibly important for us to get to know these kids as individuals and as groups so that we can invest in them completely. So that intellectual, spiritual, social, and emotional, it's really, you know, it's a whole package for us. And then, of course, it's a time of exploration and self-discovery. I mean, they just, if you look at research, the brain development of these guys is 
about the same level of brain development as three-year-olds, where brains are just going crazy, taking in information, processing, changing, and that growth happens again at this time frame. It's just an explosion for these guys, which is why it looks so messy sometimes, because there's so much happening with them, of course, hormonally, intellectually, all that going on. So they have opportunities here to have conversations, to explore, to try things in a very safe, loving environment. Our sports programs, our clubs, our electives, we want them to explore different areas. Even if they don't think they like something, we want them to try what they think they don't like. Because then they're either like, yeah, I really don't like it. Or, hey, I found out something new. So we want them, we push them to do things that are out of their comfort zone. We push them to try, we encourage them to try all sorts of different things because it's such a wonderful time for them to develop new passions or to continue with passions that they've had you know, from the time they were teeny weeny. So it's really a great opportunity for us to give them chances to do things that they might not otherwise be able to do. And some of these guys, they'll play sports in middle school, and then they'll be done. They won't necessarily be athletes, but they'll have the opportunity to do it here, and then they've had that chance to play on a team to develop those skills, and you know, maybe they do or maybe they don't go on to do that in high school or beyond. But again, we just want them to have all kinds of opportunities here. And then work ethic and character are as important as academics. And this, they hear this over and over and over, and we get the eye roll, and they'll say we know, because we say, you will learn lots about this wonderful world that we live in, about the sciences, about the humanities, foreign language. You will also learn what it is to be a good person. And we constantly preach that message to them, because what we hear from the high schools, and every single high school says this, those kids are good kids and they know how to learn. They are not perfect, and they make their share of mistakes, but they are good kids, they know how to learn, and they've been pushed to be kind, and they've been pushed to develop compassion and community. And so we really, really, again, because these guys still have a few more years left of us being able to really teach those kinds of pieces, those sort of soft skills, if you would, that they, we want them to be good people. And that's what I tell them all the time. We just, we want you to be good people. We want you to be smart. We want you to know how to learn. We really want you to be good people. And so that's a, a very important part of our whole program. And then of course, it's, it's kind of hard. It's kind of a hard place sometimes academically, but again, on purpose, rigor is really, really important to us. We want these kids to be intellectually challenged because for the most part, the stakes are still pretty low here. So in sixth grade, you know, your kids aren't taking high school classes in sixth grade. So we make those classes tough because we want these guys to move through as much as they can and develop those skills how to learn. So they'll come home and they'll tell you, science is hard. Yes, science is hard. And the teachers are there to push them, to give them what they need to do hard things. So they may experience a couple of different grades in middle school than they haven't experienced before. But again, we're there to support them, but also to make sure that it's challenging enough for these guys that they grow intellectually and in their ability to learn. So we do, we are a challenging place to do middle school and it's intentional, but again, you know, we provide these kids all the support that they need to be successful and we're not afraid to make them work. We're not afraid to say, yes, this is hard, but it's for a purpose and we want you to grow. And they, they will eventually accept that. They understand like, hey, we're doing this to you on purpose. I know it doesn't feel great, right, when you're frustrated about something, but we're really trying to push these kids as much as they can to grow before we send them off into high school and beyond. 
And then, of course, making mistakes is okay and is a very, very powerful teacher. And that's, we're talking about grades mistakes. We're talking about not doing well on tests, not turning in your homework, all those typical kinds of mistakes, but also the relationship mistakes and the impulse mistakes and the I made a bad choice when I did this to my friend or with my friend or said this because those kinds of mistakes are also very developmentally appropriate. They happen a lot here and it's again an our, our opportunity to teach them while it may be a normal course of this particular age group consequences are also a normal part of that. So, you know, while we, of course, allow for the mistakes and we understand the mistakes, we hold them accountable for that as well because it's important that they learn they are not perfect and we don't expect them to be perfect. And in those moments when they are imperfect, there is grace and there is love and there is mercy and there is then learning as well. So it's a really, again, just a unique opportunity in this time frame to work with these kids on every level. And, you know, we have kids who come in and they're just so anxious about, you know, doing it perfectly and, and making it right and making sure it's okay. And, you know, we keep telling them, listen, it's okay, you're not perfect. And it's going to be okay to make mistakes. And we want them to take healthy risks and not be so hesitant to do things because they're afraid of mistakes. And then those ones that, you know, may make a few more mistakes automatically, you know, we work with those guys and we love those guys too and say, okay, like, hey, let's learn. How do we figure out how to not make this same mistake again? Because again, it's just an important part of life. And, you know, we're not perfect. And you'll have teachers that'll say, oh my gosh, guys, you know, I messed that up. Or I'll say, goodness gracious, I messed that up. Or they'll point out mistakes in my PowerPoints, which occasionally happen. So it's a, you know, it's a loving, wonderful, grace-filled, but also accountability-filled, you know, opportunity for us. And then again, um, for our teachers, we really, you know, we push teachers to continue their training. So, you know, we look for opportunities to do webinars in this case. We're not going very many places for conferences these days, but we will get back to that. So we're constantly pushing our teachers to be better as well. We have an extraordinary group of teachers who also know they can get better. And so they learn right along with the kids. And so we give them training. We want them to stay current. Um, we want them to be as effective as they possibly can in the classroom. And again, that's not just, hey, I need to learn more about my subject. That is also, hey, tell me about middle schoolers. You know, what, what more can I learn about these guys in this age group and how to deal with the things that they're dealing with? Because that changes every year. We think back, and my gosh, I didn't have, you know, the cell phone and the social media and all these things. And so we've learned right along with them and, and the issues and the opportunities those things create. You know, we've learned that too. So we're constantly looking and we're constantly seeking and we're constantly growing as a faculty as well. And then, you know, that common language, that's for us too, that is very much, we want our teachers to be people of good character. And we want our teachers to show and model because if you say one thing and do another, particularly at this age, they're focusing on what you do. And if it looks different than what you say, they're not gonna listen very well to what you say. So they are looking at these teachers and they're watching these teachers and, and the teachers know that and they take that responsibility seriously. So, you know, as a faculty, we want to model grace. We want to model compassion. We want to say, look at that. I made a mistake. I'm going to have to move on from that and we're going to have to fix that. So it's a really great, again, opportunity because they're watching and they're watching all the time and they will point out the inconsistencies. And it's, a, again, just such a wonderful time for us to grow as people. So as we demand of your children, we also demand of ourselves. And this, when we talk about common language, this is sort of our middle school common language. And so all of those philosophies and that mission statement are really wrapped up in this. And this was actually written by students 
and they say it every morning as a part. They do the pledge, they do the honor code, and we do announcements every morning in the middle school. So this is what we say. So these, when occasionally a middle schooler ends up in my office or in a deep, meaningful conversation with Mr. Snowden, we almost always refer back to our honor code because this really embodies who we are as a middle school. And that last line, man, they can tell you that after the first you know, month or so, work hard, be nice. Work hard, be nice. And so when they come into my office, did you work hard? No. Were you nice? No. Okay, what do we do to fix that? So it really is a wonderful way for us to drill down with these kids. Hey, this is important. And again, it's not just about what you're learning. It's about who you are as a person and how you're engaged with the people in your immediate community, in your greater community. So this is where we take them to lead them to all of the philosophies. And, you know, that's kind of wrapped up in our, in our honor statement. Where are we going? So this is kind of, you know, what, what our end goal is. And one of the things I love about this middle school is it, it is really a three-year process. Of course, they will go through sixth grade, seventh grade, eighth grade, but we look at it as a continuum. Those grades don't function in isolation. They, of course, have different academic requirements for each grade level. But what we have started with, if you know Sean Covey, is begin with the end in mind. So we are looking at how we want these kids to grow and learn and what we want them to be and know when they're gone, and we work backwards from there. So, you know, we, of course, prepare them for high school because they can't stay here. In fact, I was in a conversation with some eighth graders the other day, Mr. Kleekamp and I, we share the eighth graders when it comes to their religion class. So we split them into guys and girls, and we have each for a semester. So it's my turn with the boys this semester because we want to stay engaged with these kids. And this is really, eighth grade is the last chance we have to really, you know, be with these guys. So we split that group. And so, you know, we were talking, I was talking to the guys, and, and they're, you know, by eighth grade, and some of them have been here since pre-K three, and that's a long time. And they're saying, oh my gosh, we're so tired. We're so ready to be done with Holy Comforter. And, you know, when my own children started saying that, my husband got a little like, okay, don't freak out, Amy. Like they're saying they're done with Holy Comforter. And I'm like, I understand. I got it. They have to be done with Holy Comforter because they can't stay. So ultimately, you know, what they're saying is I'm, I'm ready for more. Like it comes out, I can't stand uniforms. This place is so boring. All of those things by eighth grade. But what they're saying is, I'm ready for more. And we want them to be. I worry if they say, oh my gosh, I don't want to leave this place. And they come back and they tell us, you know, after they're in eighth grade telling us how much they hate it. They come back in ninth grade, later on in ninth grade, tenth grade, and they say, I get it. Like, I get it. It's a different place. So we have to prepare them for high school, and we do that very well. And every single high school in this county wants our kids, public, private, all of them. And we're in close contact with all of those schools to make sure that they are ready to transition from eighth grade to ninth grade. And the last year or so has been a little crazy, and we know that we don't really know what it's all going to look like, but I can guarantee you these eighth graders are ready for what they will face in ninth grade. And by the time your guys get to eighth grade, they will be ready for what happens in ninth grade. Because again, it's a constant conversation with a lot of the high schools. We have some really great connections and we've sent kids everywhere. So we are constantly, hey, where are you guys? Our foreign language teachers are talking to their foreign language teachers. Our math teachers are talking to their math teachers. You know, I'm in contact with a lot of the administrators because we want that transition to be smooth. And these guys are overprepared. That's what we hear every year as these guys are overprepared for ninth grade. Not only in what they know, but again, how they write, how they learn their study skills, because these are all pieces that we know they expect you to have and they don't necessarily teach in high school. 
So we want to make sure that they're ready, not only intellectually, but also socially and emotionally for that next step. So that's kind of primary goal number one is we got to get them ready because we can't keep them. And then again, work ethic and good character. Like we just want these guys to be good kids because that takes you so far. And we talk to them about making mistakes here and how it's okay. And we're kind of glad they made that mistake here because the stakes get higher later and the consequences get a little bit tougher. So we are constantly involved in those conversations with these guys about working hard and being nice. And they, they can tell you, you know, okay, what does Mrs. Vernon say? What does Mr. Snowden say? What do all the teachers say? Work hard, be nice. And then our 20th century, 21st century skills, um, collaboration, communication, information, literacy, creativity, critical thinking. Again, these are all embedded in our curriculum. There is so much information that is available to and comes at these guys constantly. They need to know how to process that information. They need to know how to determine what's valid, what's invalid. They need to be able to categorize it. They need to be able to analyze it. They need to be able to use the information. And that is what is really so challenging for these guys as they move through 6th, 7th, and 8th grade is the level to which they get ready to analyze, to process, and to use information. And so that's a key component to our program, is teaching them those specific skills. Because again, we will teach them the fundamentals of you know, periodic table and algebra and equations, but at the same time, we're teaching them how to process that information and how to work with people because the work environment is collaborative and all of this information can be easily accessed, but then using the information to accomplish a goal or a purpose is something that they really need to know how to do. And they come in at all different levels. You know, some of these guys as sixth graders and this, you know, I, I have two children, very different children. They were different when they came in as sixth graders. One of them, she was ready, process. The other one, not quite there. So we work with these guys, particularly as sixth graders, they come in at varying stages of ready to process that information. So our teachers are wonderful at providing them those skills and intentionally taking them from sixth grade, you know, more concrete skills all the way through eighth grade, where they really are doing some amazing things processing and developing and using the information. So, you know, it's really important, those things. We're constantly going back and looking at our curriculum and seeing how we can improve it with an eye to those skills as well. And then, like Mr. Kleekamp talked about, independence and self-advocacy. So the emails you'll see as sixth grade parents, you will see them addressed to the child with you as a part of that email. So the conversation really moves from teacher parent to teacher kid and parent. And that I know that's starting a lot in fifth grade as well. But these guys really want, we want them to develop those relationships with their teachers and take ownership because this is really, it's their education and it's their job. This is what they are doing. And we want them to feel comfortable. We want them to have confidence talking to our teachers. And it's, I mean, my kids had trouble with it. Like, what? No, I'm not going to talk to that teacher for you. You need to talk to that teacher. It's a tough thing. But we push them to do that because we want them, by the time they leave here, to really have confidence in advocating for themselves and in taking ownership of that education. So that's the conversation, like Mr. Kleekamp says, we are not cutting you out of the conversation. We are redirecting it. And we will have conversations with you guys, with the kids, all of it. But we really start to foster that relationship between teacher and student and really start to encourage the student to take ownership, to ask questions, to be their own advocate. It's a really great skill. And I think one, you know, that is... I don't know, unique to Holy Comforter, but the emphasis I think that we put on it is really important. And, you know, we're a small independent school, so we're able to do that. We're able to really foster those relationships. So that's an important piece. 
for our program. Quickly, our actual academic program. We have five core academic areas, language arts, math, social studies, science, and foreign language that our kids jump right into in sixth grade. And then we have kind of a wheel, a rotating requirement in sixth grade um, because they get laptops. And you know many of them start to have phones around this time period. So we have what's called foundations in technology. And all sixth graders take that. And it starts with how to use the website. We get into all the cyber safety issues. We get into all the being kind online issues. They learn how to code. They learn how to do all sorts of really wonderful things in this class. But it really is teaching them how to use technology appropriately. Because we're handing them this device that can access many different things. And we want them to understand how to use that properly. So that's one of our sixth grade courses. And in seventh grade, they take PE. And then in eighth grade, it's a health PE class. And it's actually a high school course. And we'll talk about that in a minute. But it's called Hope Health Opportunities Through Physical Education. Um, and then they have electives. And they have two electives a year. And they meet every other day. So they're essentially semester-long courses, but they last the whole year because they meet every other day. And just a quick look at our sixth grade elective choices for this last year. It changes a little bit every year based on teacher availability, but these are some of the classes that we offered for our sixth graders last year. Seventh and eighth graders have a few more opportunities. We have a really great speech and debate class that's taught to, by one of our teachers, um, but that curriculum is a little bit advanced for sixth graders. So in seventh and eighth grade, they'll have a little bit more elective choices, but this is what we offered in our sixth grade. And you can see we try to really do a good job of, of giving art and music and science electives. So we really try to appeal to a wide variety of interests for these guys. And they don't have PE in sixth grade. And they don't really have recess in sixth grade anymore, which they kind of look at me like, what do you mean we don't have recess? So that's why we have um, those get moving and whacked out sports and girls get moving and the other whacked out sports. Those are kind of a lot of the sixth graders take those because that means they have at least some point, you know, where they're out and they're running around and they're exercising. So we encourage the sixth graders to do that. We want them to have, we know it's important for them to do that. So we try to include all sorts of woodworking Mr. Williams, if any of you guys know Mr. Williams, um, he is our facilities director and a master carpenter. And this class we picked up just last year, and it's really, it's extraordinary. You know, it's shop, basically, but it's so much more than that for Mr. Williams, and your kids are going to get a chance to kind of walk through his class um, today. And then uh, Dr. Mack teaches a great photography class that we have this year. We're hoping when we can get fully back into this building that we're going to have like a technology production class. So again, this is what we offered this year. And then it'll look slightly different. Lots of these courses will remain the same. But, um, you know, this, is, this was our sixth grade offering this year. So again, opportunities to explore, you know, to try something different, um, to do something unique, you know, maybe you don't want to be a master carpenter, but you take that woodworking class and, I mean, you learn all sorts of skills, but, you know, you also do something that you might not have ever done without this opportunity. So, you know, we just really want these kids to, to try something. Um, and then our high school credits, you can, in fact, leave here with up to six. Most kids don't leave there with that many because that's a, that's a pretty hardcore math track. Um, but math, you can learn, earn up to do. We have algebra honors and geometry honors, so you have to place into those courses. And then science, we have one biology honors, also an eighth grade course. Um, so those you can leave with high school credits. And then foreign language, most kids will leave with at least one foreign language credit. So um, we're off, we offer Latin, French, and Spanish. And Latin... The first year, the language is really broke up into two years. So if you take the language all three years, the same language, you can end up with two foreign language credits. Um, we do encourage all of our kiddos who graduate with two foreign language credits to go on to at least that third year. Because when you're looking at competitive colleges, they don't necessarily like to see you end your foreign language career in eighth grade. 
um, they really want to see you go on. So, and some kids get into a language and they say, oh, okay, can I switch next, next year? Yes, they could do the 1A every year and do all three languages because you really don't have to have high school credits and middle school. We just offer these courses, um, you know, because we do have some kids that, that want to pursue that kind of thing. So, and then our HOPE course, everybody takes, and that is the course Leon County specifically requires that course to graduate. So between our PE class, um, the credit comes in eighth grade when they take that health component. But that course is accepted by Leon County as the HOPE course. So that one will definitely be taken care of. All right, what will be new for these guys who have been here um, and, and to some extent, for those of you guys who are at other schools as well, we have a rotating block schedule. Probably 10 or 11 years ago, we moved to a block schedule. So our classes are 70 minutes long, and they see four of their six academic classes every day with one elective as well. So they have five classes every day. Four of them are academic. One is the elective. And we really, that 70-minute block gives the teachers a gr wonderful amount of time to do all sorts of great um, hands-on activities and to really dive deeply into the curriculum. So we have found that's, a, that's an excellent time frame for our students. And it, we end up with a rotation. So we don't have math at the end of the day every day for you know, those kids who may be a little sleepy at that, you know, 2.30 hour and, you know, or who may not, you know, be fully awake in that first class. Math is not always the first class. So it does rotate a little bit. You will see the schedule eventually and you'll go, oh my gosh, your kids will get it within days. Like they, they, they pick up on it really quickly. They're already doing a rotation um, if your kiddos are here in fifth grade. So it's not hard for them to pick up on. And then we have, of course, choices, the electives. We have clubs during the school day on our a part of our rotation. Um, so, you know, we have, we've had Play-Doh clubs. We have, um, I mean, we just have all sorts of clubs, card cl clubs, board games. It's about a 25-minute block um, once in our rotation in our six days. So it's just kind of a time for them to, you know, decompress a little bit, do something, again, try something new. We have a trivia club this time. We've got a culture club. It's really up to the teachers. And sometimes the kids will say, hey, can we do this club? And sure, we can do that club. So those change by semester. And then we've got a really great sports program. Um, and like I said, you know, for those guys who are not necessarily like born to be athletes or really want to be athletes, we encourage them to try. We probably have 80 to 90% of our kids who are involved in our athletics in any given season simply because it's just fun. And, you know, we absolutely are competitive and we definitely have different levels of teams, um, but we want those kids to try that, to not feel intimidated by that and to have the opportunity to play where they might not have the opportunity to play in high school. I have my older child, is a volleyball player. She played in high school. My younger child played volleyball here, not in high school, no sports in high school, but she had a great time doing it here and she felt safe and she learned all those wonderful skills. So it's a great sports program and I mean we have pretty much everything. And then organization and day-to-day -day decisions. This is, this is what trips them up little bit in sixth grade <laughs> is this piece and not so much this year. It'll be really interesting to see if we don't have, end up having lockers at all this year, because we don't right now, and then we have a whole group of sixth graders and seventh graders who've never used lockers. So that'll be a super fun challenge for us next year because they have to, you know, they got to figure out like, what do I need for my next class? And, you know, they have a whole two buildings to go through. So, you know, they're trying to figure out, well, if I have to go back to my locker, but my next class is in this. And our sixth grade teachers do, I mean, the whole first six part, sixth grade part of our target course, which is um, kind of an advisory period that our guidance counselor who just snuck in the back, Mrs. Butera, runs, is really dedicated to how do I figure out where to go when and what to bring like that. I mean, we do that for weeks and we stand out in the hallways, typically the first couple of weeks of school when there's the, I can't get my lock undone. I can't get my lock undone. I can't get my lock undone. And we have an orientation and they can take the lock home and they can do all the practicing. And there's no such thing as a tardy for sixth graders for a while. So that's the stuff they get all just 
totally jacked up about. Like, I'm not going to make it to class. No, you probably aren't, but it's going to be okay. Right? You're all right. And you're probably going to have the wrong stuff. And that's going to be okay too. Right? And so, you know, it's, it's fun to see. And it's fun to see them then realize how quickly they really can catch on to it. I will say, for those of you with boys, it does take a little longer with those boys, as you've probably, you know, maybe already observed in some circumstances. So organization, day-to-day decision-making is going to be a little different. Like I mentioned, our target program, um, it's a steady time during the day. That's one of the things that actually doesn't rotate. And we do all sorts of wonderful activities. They're broken up into smaller groups. So there's 12 to 13 kids in any given target. They're same grade level, and they have different curriculum that's designed, like I said, by our guidance counselor. So in eighth grade, we're looking at high school choices, and we're talking about high school, and we're doing things like that. And in sixth grade, we're just trying to make sure you get to class on time. Um, so it's, you know, it's a wonderful, wonderful curriculum. It's when we do our religion class. It's when we have our chapels. We will still have chapels in middle school. So all of those things are part of our daily experience with these guys. And then, of course, they'll have their laptops. Um, they'll have lockers, uh, class trips. Yes, we will, we will get those back. Um, dances, we will also get those back. Those are hilarious. I mean, really, because we do need parent chaperones for those. I encourage you, even though the kids will look at you with utter panic and say, do not come, you need to chaperone at least one dance. At least one, just so you can see the just, I mean, it's a big social experiment. It's really just for the adults' entertainment to watch. Um, But it's so fun for these guys to, you know, be able to, to get together in that kind, again, safe, environment we started doing them in here which of course is a beautiful place to have the dances so they always that's the question I get most often this year are we gonna have a dance I hope so like I'm really hopeful for May we'll we'll see like we gotta do it safely Um, but that's the question I get most are we gonna have a dance are we gonna have a dance are we gonna have a class trip are we gonna have a dance I hope so Um, and then the freedom also Mr. Kleekamp talked about and it really isn't that much different but I'll tell you the biggest thing is they'll say you don't have to walk in a line, right? That feels like freedom to them. Because when you say, oh, we have so much freedom, what they mean is we don't have to walk in a line. Like we get to walk about, you know, we do not let them roam about unattended and, you know, wander over to, you know, the eye doctor. But they do feel like they have this extraordinary amount of freedom because they're changing classes and they're in different classes with different people. And, you know, they do, in fact, get to walk from place to place without being with the same group of people in line. So I love it because they don't realize how not free they are, but they feel like they are just grown adults. And it's, it's so fun to watch them develop that. And I mean, it's just such a good time. And we love these guys. You know, they really are messy and wonderful. And I just cannot, like, I can't imagine being anywhere else. And we've had a couple of our teachers started in high school. And so it was a bit of a a leap down um, from middle school. And, you know, I think at first they thought, I don't really know. They love it now. Like, they just, you don't know until you're there how wonderful like these kiddos can really be um, and how loving and how kind and how challenging they can be and how rewarding it is for us to be able to see that growth again you know over three years we don't look at these guys as you know really sixth graders seventh graders eighth graders we look at these guys as middle schoolers and here is this you know person we have for this limited amount of time what are we able to do with them? And so it is absolutely our privilege to be able to invest in these guys. And there's a, a picture. So this is, this is typically what it looks like for our graduates at graduation. And we, we did do a wonderful graduation at the end of the summer last year. It was a beautiful ceremony out in our courtyard. Um, we didn't get to get this picture. So, you know, that's kind of what they look like. But because... They get angry if I don't put their picture up. This is last year's graduating class, which we made it to our DC trip by that much. Um, And I mean, we were so excited to be able to get that in. We do that um, early on in February. So that was just before things went a little nuts. Um, But that is, you know, that's that's our eighth grade class from last year. Um, This is from the, the year before that. So, you know, they're just, they're happy most of the time. 
Um, and they're such great kids. And, you know, again, it's just, it's just our privilege to be here with them. Um, so thank you very much. Again, I'm happy to answer specific questions if you guys have them about the program. Um, but that hopefully gives you just kind of a, an understanding of who we are as a school um, and why it really is just such a great place for these guys at this time specifically. So thank you very much.